Hello everyone and welcome to TeamFortress.tv's live coverage of ESEA Season 16. We have a good one here for you tonight. I am Bloodsire, of course, and joining me is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Marxist. What's up? I don't know a lot, Bloodsire. Looking to watch uh, the number one team take on the suspected number three team. Should be pretty fun. Absolutely. Um... Both these teams are going to be warmed up and ready to go. Um, we just saw 4G. They just had a, a uh, quite a convincing win over 6 Cuties just a second ago. They won 5-0. Um, and over on the Exertus side, they actually had a SIBO match before, and they lost it um, to Post-Apocalyptic. That is the Brad, Siegel, Milo, Sezko, Tic Tac, uh, Justin team. Uh, over in Sebo, and they actually lost that one on Viaduct, so um, Exertus there um, getting a loss on, on the night already. Um, we do expect, Fro well, at least, I, well, I won't get into predictions yet, but uh, we would say that Froyo Tech, Froyolo Tech, 4G, whatever you want to call them, they are the stronger team. Obviously, they are undefeated. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Exertus can do against them on this tried and true Badlands map. Of course, Marxist, we did see Exertus have a, a quite a close match uh, with the uh, one of the favorites with mix-up earlier on in the season um, So if they really want to make a name for themselves and really uh, show that they are they are above everyone else uh, That's below them in the, in the fourth and beyond places. Uh, they need to uh, they need to pull some rounds off of for yo tech here Yeah, and in the past we've seen super powerful teams have rough matches here and there and uh, potential third places grab it before or even the uh, there was the old pinball wizards disaster match where they uh Took it to mix up on this map, so you never know. Could could turn out differently, may maybe possibly not, but uh, you know you never know. I think Exertus is a good enough team they could they could give a match here. Yeah, and um, we have seen. Um, I was taking a look at the stats earlier on, but Donsky and Decimate particularly, uh, they've been going crazy. They've been putting out tons of damage in their matches so far this season. Uh, so we need to pay attention to that. Of course, we are waiting right now for the twelfth member. Um, the sixth member of Froyo Tech to to join up. Uh, who is that? Who do we need? We have uh, Banny Clockwork, Shade Dummy Ruin. Uh, who am I missing here? Blaze. Oh, That's of course. Blaze. Yeah. Of course. Well, actually, since I just did that, um, I'm gonna actually run through the 4G Froyo Tech Froyolo Tech roster. I haven't picked a name for them yet. I guess I'll decide sometime during the cast. Um, but over, of course, on the Medic for 4G, we are gonna have Shade. Uh, the scouts are going to be Banny and Clockwork. Pocket Soldier is Ruin. The Demo Man is Dummy, the Golden Boy of Gaming himself, and our late Roamer, who is not here yet, uh, he is Blaze. And of course, the backup is me. So um, if Blaze doesn't show up, Marxist, you might be doing the solo cast, because I might get the call to go in. Stranger things have happened, Blood Sire. I'll go for the, uh, the Exertus roster. On, uh, I'll try and follow your order. On Medic, we've got the Fragile making his return to invite this season after, I think he took a season or two off there after a protracted break. And then we've got Decimate and Alpha. Alpha will be Pascal uh, in this one, so, so as to avoid confusion. And then you've got Rando and Mela bringing in the soldiers. Rando is the pocket. And then the Badonsky on Romer. Gonna be. I personally will be watching a lot of Badonsky because uh, he's, he's impressed me. Yeah. Right now, I am getting word from Ruin uh, that Blaze is having client issues, so he is restarting his machine to try to get the old restart to take care of the uh, the client issue elements. They're gonna keep me posted. Um, not what we want to see right away. Of course, a little late coming into this match off that six cuties uh, match that went a little late. Uh, into the 11 o'clock Eastern hour, but right now we are waiting for Blaze to fix his machine, to fix his client issues. Hopefully that gets going. I don't know if he tried to pay by e-check or not, um, but he's not here yet, so we're going to have to wait and see. Or we'll see the illustrious uh, Bloodsire Roamer. We will, and actually, you know, I don't know, it's interesting, because I have ranked for them before, and I don't know what they would do to shuffle up their roster to sort of accommodate me, because I'm pretty washed up now. Um, and I think their best bet would, to put me, would be to put me on Scout and to put Banny on Roamer. And that would be interesting, because uh, Banny's good at everything. I mean, he's a good Roamer. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm praying that's not going to happen. For the sake <laughs> of 4G uh, and our viewers, let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, and let's hope that Blaze gets his client issues working there. Um, but we do see that all of the uh, Exertus players are here and ready to go. 
Uh, like you said, we do have uh, Bodonsky on the demo man. And Fragile, like you said, who hasn't played in a few seasons, is back on the meta class. And I was very excited about that when I saw that earlier on in the season. Of course, because I come from a time um, when the Fragile was the medic. He was like the poster boy medic over there on Pandemic. Healing Old Reptile. Uh, which is the classic medic soldier combo so it's good to see an old familiar face back in the game right now um i wish i saw another old familiar face by the name of blaze but like we said he's mashing his computer together trying to get things going yeah sometimes you need a little bit of that bubble gum and tape to uh to get the esca client running i'm of the i'm of the generation that had that uh watched all the mge videos of fragile talking about Badlands lasts for 45 minutes specifically from the, the perspective of Medic. So that did things to me on a, a psychological level that I won't really go into. <laughs> yeah. Um, fragile, definitely a wealth of knowledge in the game. And if we take a look at the rosters of the players, actually, we, all, we just lost. Who did we lose? We lost another. Oh, it was Alpha. He's saying BRB. So at least we have an excuse for Alpha. Blaze is in. Ladies and gentlemen, so I don't have to... Well, he's not in yet. I guess he's in two minutes from now. Um, so he's going to come back. Alpha's going to come back. We are going to have 12 in the server. Then we'll stop just talking about nothingness. And we'll be able to talk about TF2, and that's always good. Yeah, we'll have a fun game to cast. I don't know. I guess uh, in, in the next two minutes, we could go over predictions. Could have some contention on that, yeah? I like that idea. You, you first, buddy. Oh, okay. Well, I'm. Uh, I would like to predict a lot better, but I'm gonna go like f five two for Oyo. Okay. Uh, I was actually gonna say five three for Oyo, for Yolo, Yolo Tech, for G Tech. Uh, I'm gonna go five three with them. I think they do have the better players, not by a lot. Um, Exertus do have some talented players, uh, and they have definitely gotten things going. They've shown, like we said, with that match versus mix up that. Uh, they can hang with the best, but I do think that 4G is just a little bit too strong. The clockwork banny scout combo is is ridiculous, uh, and the rest of the team is quite good themselves too. So I'm going to give it like everyone might also be predicting in chat. And chat, by the way, I want to see your predictions. We're already seeing that a little bit. Some 5-2s coming out, some 5-3s, uh, but I definitely want to see your predictions. Turbolish over in chat says 5-3 Exertus, so that is a bold prediction. Uh, it's it's possible if they get some stellar mids, they could Badlands last. You know that point caps in in, in one point five seconds or so, so you can get away with some stuff on this one. And that's you know a, a lot of people talked crap about Gravel Pit and uh, you know it's so random, it's like a coin flip. But Badlands can be a map that does that to teams every now and again. That's true, and we were talking a little bit before we ever went live, we were talking about just the nature of the high-level teams and um, teams being passive and whatnot, and both teams in this match, you know, they're not passive. They are very aggressive, they're confident in their abilities to cause chaos and react to chaos, um, and so at any moment, uh, you know, whoever has the more chaotic but yet more some strangely chaotic but more, I guess, together game plan... Um, at any moment, that could be the team that wins the middle and wins the round. Things happen so quickly at the high level that way. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that happens. Exertus, the players on Exertus especially, I know Alpha, uh, Badansi, Decime, they are all very aggressive players. I haven't seen how Fragile likes to run that team yet. Um, Fragile, of course, from an earlier time, would be more accustomed to the slower meta. Uh, but I expect that Exertus are going to be uh, displaying their quick sort of onslaught game plan game style here and of course 4g on the other side they do that too and they're very aggressive so uh, it should be a nice back and forth match where we see the team's lock horns but uh, make some interesting plays we are waiting on alpha now who did say brb i guess maybe he's also got a machine restart in the works uh, he should be back any second and we'll get things going yeah maybe he had to put the old pc in the coffin to recharge it for a little bit <laughs> but, uh, talking about the older style of fragile it it doesn't get talked about much because ran uh, Rando's relatively new to the upper echelons of Invite. Mine, you know, he was on AG, they went to LAN, but nobody ever really talked a whole ton about him. And as far as Rando goes, he's he's a bit of an older, more pockety pocket. So you'll see him get at, at least traditionally. I haven't seen a ton of this team yet because they've only you know they've only played like four or five matches as of yet. 
But uh, he traditionally has been a pocket that really liked being healed basically all the time and kind of being the linchpin of his team. So that may be something that complements Fragile very well since he more or less was involved in the inventing of said style. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because on the reverse side, we have Ruin over on Pocket. Uh, and I can't... And of course, he comes from a time where he was one of the best medics medic, medics around. And then he became one of the best scouts around. Before that, he played Demoman. Uh, now he's on Pocket, and I haven't actually seen him ever play Pocket before. Not on the invite level, and I don't... You chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he has played Pocket or Soldier at the invite level. And um, we're going to see that now. Uh, at the beginning of the season, it was Banny on Pocket, I believe. When I joined them to ride their roster on Backup, it was Banny on Pocket and Ruin as the second scout. And they've switched things up. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how Ruin uh, can can take his skills to the next level, uh, improve just like so many of the players that are on both these rosters that uh, he's quite competent at every class in the game. Yeah, if it, I've I've checked out the Ruin stream a little bit to see how the journey into Pocket was. And he, you know, his, it's definitely a case of someone who knows the game really well. So he's... It it seems like maybe on occasion he gets surprised by things or like things that his team's doing, but uh, you know he knows where he's supposed to be and he can definitely hit shots. So I don't think ruin it may be new and kind of feel weird because you're used to seeing ruin ruin people on scout, but it's it's okay for me. I it, I like the ruin pocket. Of course, Banny pocket was was fine too. Yeah. Um. You know, and it's sort of a, it's an interesting thing, because at the beginning of the season, you or before the season ever started, you had uh, you had Ruin trying out for the team on Scout, um, sort of trying, and, and not just trying out for the team, but trying the team out, deciding if he really wanted to join the team, and to see him switch classes like this, uh, and decide to go with a different class, kind of shows the level of um, comfort within the team, the level of team uh, synergy, I guess, the fact that he'd be able to switch class like that. Uh, and, and just settle in and decide to do what's best for the team and get it going here. But I am getting word from Ruin that they are live two minutes in the future. I guess that's about a minute now. Um, so we have run through our predictions. We did run through the teams. So very soon, ladies and gentlemen, we will be seeing the green text of awesomeness that I like to call. It'll be my first ESEA catch cast of the season. Uh, my first cast of either season in ESEA or SIBO. So I'm quite excited, Marxist, to get this underway. And it's good to have you back, Bloodsire. One of my, I think my second cast ever was with you, so reliving the memories. I've since done many more, but it'll be good. I think it was a Gollywash match of some sort. Yeah, I think, I think actually, I think it was Gollywash, and it brings a tear in my eye to remember um, such great times of yore when uh, I casted and you were along with me, and, and now here we are. We're, we're ready to do it all again on Badlands, the, um, the tried and true map of TF2. Um, Exertus versus 4G, the first seed 4G versus the third seed so far, Exertus. Uh, it should be a good one. Now, I don't know how long the delay is, Marxist, but I believe we should be going live any second now. Any second. If I just keep saying any second, it'll come true. Yeah, it'll. De well, Fragile just readied. I don't know. I should have kept better track of who was readying and unreadying, but hopefully we'll see the dot already come across. It'll be that, that final piece of the readiness puzzle. Now, I had 5-3 in favor of 4G, and you had 5-2, five, five, right? right? Five, two. Yep, 5-2. All right, so there we go. We do see setup classes going live soon. Uh, I love to see that. Now, the teams are spawned up. I'm actually going to take the first one, Marxist, because I haven't done this in a while. I, kinda, I just kind of want to do it, you know? My pleasure. All right, so here we go. I'm taking a look at Badonsky. There goes the green text of awesomeness. The match is live. I'm going to take a look at the clock and at Badonsky's rollout here as he goes to middle. Nice little skip jump on the ramp there. Puts himself to 71 HP. He's out to middle at 946 on the clock. Goes to the safe route. Goes into the window, and he is spamming the Red Scouts right now. Uh, and the Red Team deciding to go all of Valley. I'm going to click off, take a look at Randall right now, who's up on the train. The teams have switched now on the middle fight. No kills as of yet for either team. Here come the bombs. Ruin gets a kill onto Randall. Now there goes a kill onto from Alpha onto Banny. And Ruin with the second onto the Fragile. Down goes the Blue Medic. Three down now for the Blue team. The Red are all over middle. Blue loses another. Decimate goes down. Mela goes down. Pascal, the last one left alive. He's going to take down Shade, actually. So I'm taking a look at Alpha right now. He sees a soldier. He's putting shots into him. That soldier's trying to collect the health pack. I don't think he got it. And Alpha, the last man 
standing on the middle right now, just doing all that he can to fight both soldiers. Puts a nice shot into one soldier. Oh, and eats a rocket from Ruin. So a nice job from Alpha, uh, delaying the middle and, and showing some nice scout prowess there on the middle fight. Um, but Red Team are going to have spawns and are going to get there first. Yep, yeah, and Shade actually dies pretty late in that, so Fragile's gonna have himself a little bit of an advantage It may not really come into play, but we're gonna just refight mid. Badonsky's gonna grab Ruin in a Sticky Trap, and that may see it go. Banny goes down as well, and Fragile picks himself up an arrow kill, so that leaves just Shade and Dummy for Froyo, and mid will now go to Exertus and probably Spire as well, but... You do have the Golden Boy Gaming down there on the bridge, Bloodsire. Yeah, he's got his medic with him, and he's just trying to put some uh, safety stickies up there, some um, some some stickies to try to dismay the blue team pushing in here. We do see a 25% advantage in favor of Fragile and Randa, who are sort of pushing their way by the trash right now. Um, it's being held a little bit by the red team, but now they have to back it up. The Uber is up for the Fragile, and Shade was not healing anybody, so he is stuck at 79% on his last point, 20%. Advantage in favor of the blue team who have to pop due to bombers out in the yard uh, So a nice job right there from the red team forcing the blue uber to pop red team now are sitting with their uber and They're getting out to push into the top lobby. They see a soldier ruins gonna clean him up So Mela goes down one down now for the blue team uh, the red team need to get themselves out onto the second point yeah, importantly here we do have decimate going in the drop down and now he's running in but dummy's gonna maybe block him Long enough for this cap not to matter. There are stickies all over that, and Clockwork's going to get himself a decimate. The Uber is going to come out, and second should go to Froyo any second here. There we go. I was I was captivated by decimate there, because <laughs> those, those push-outs are always the most dangerous time. And Froyo's just going to carry it on into mid and probably get it pretty easily here. We do have a sniper from Alpha, but... Nothing doing right now. Uber is going to maybe come to Mela uh, if anything gets too crazy here. Yeah, that, that was a real good push from um, 4G right there. They knew that they had two down um, for the blue team. And even though that they were down Uber advantage, they saw that Alpha was on Sniper. So that allowed them to push right into middle and bully out the blue team. Now we have bombers from the red team. Blaze coming in. He's going to take down Badanti and the Fragile, assisted by a teammate. He's going to take down another. Down goes Mela. Only Randall left alive. Where is he? He's in house right now. He's jumping out. He sees the medic, but unfortunately his rocket hits the dirt. He's going to visit the respawn. And it is a clean wipe for the blue team. Red team are all over that second cap. And Shade already has Uber, and he is running onto Greybridge with his soldier. Yeah, it looks like they're going to want to take this in basically as quickly as possible. Rune's maybe going to come in through lower. No, they're going to opt to go up top. Seize here. Bring in Dummy and a Scout. Oh, the Pyro there in Decimate. Delays it a little bit. Backs him out. Throws Rando down to the ground. Mail is going to die as well to a Scout. And it looks like we pretty much got a done deal last year. No one on Froyo has died. Yep, that's a clean ace sort of push there, Bloodsire. Yeah, the Pyro on defense wor works really well against projectile classes, but as soon as that scout comes in to assist the Uber, it's lights out for the Pyro. Clockwork doing a good job there, catching the tail end of the Uber, coming in, getting a whole lot of frags, and then capping the point. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start being quiet and allow you to take this middle. All right, well, I'm going to switch to Rue here and watch a bit of Dummy. He's already taken a very commanding position on the point. Fading to the right side of mid, Blaze is going to get himself decimate. And now the mids, we're seeing sort of the backwards mid again. But uh, Fragile and Rando now finally making their way up the slope after hiding for a little bit. Fragile's going to get picked off there. Shade's going to go down to Alpha. And we're going to see a 2v2 develop with Banny and... Well, just pretty much just Banny here and uh, and Badonsky. And I don't know. Badonsky's doing the MGE strat, hiding in house, sticking it off, but Banny's gonna get him eventually. Yeah, and we do see the blue players for um, XTS right now are spawning up and they're trying to get into the middle. There are three up though on the middle point for the red team. A pretty even middle fight, but the red team uh, do have the bodies earlier on in that second 
uh, fight of the middle, they are going to be able to cap it. Um, the medic advantage is in favor of a shade by about 15%. Pretty negligible if Fragile uh, uh, gets things going here. But the red team are not going to waste any time. And they're getting advantage very quickly. A nice rocket onto that soldier. Mela goes down by the hands of Banny and Clockwork. And a nice rocket from the soldier. And 4G just coming in and dominating the second point. Cleaning up four, including the medic of the blue team. Only Decimate and Badonski left alive. Yeah, the Fragile was doing that thing where the medics do sometimes where they were chilling around. This is probably most definitely going to go to uh, the Froya here, but I don't know. Exertus is making a good effort of it. Lots of kills coming down on people trying to get early cap time. Fragile's kind of running around down on the ground. There is still Uber for Shade. He's chilling in upper lobby. They're sort of peeking around. Is, is, are he and Ruin? They're going to get Alpha. Go ahead and take the Uber. Chase the demo into spawn. There's only one stick on the point in there. That's going to that's gonna go. But Clockwork made massive plays on that, on that push there, running in and just killing the pocket and everyone else. And we just saw sort of the uh, the, the lethality, uh, the lethality, the, the lethalness of 4G. They had only had three players left alive, their medic and their scouts, but that was enough. You pop the Uber on the scouts and just go with it, and they were able to clean up uh, the Exertus members and cap that point here. Mid number three, and I got my eyes on Banny, who's fighting a scout underneath the point. He's going to back it up just a little bit, so I'm going to switch it over to Blaze, who's deep in enemy territory, but he gets cleaned up. Now we have Exertus doing all sorts of damage. Mela, I got my eye on. He is doing work with that block box. Don't worry, it is legal. So he only got three rockets, but they heal him, and he has auto-reload on, so not too much of a downside for him. He is rocket jumping. He is already on the second point, ready to catch these uh, these back uh, tracking red members. Blue team are all up in the red team's yard. Of course, they capped the middle point, and now they are capping the second point. Uh, and Shade and company are, are just... They're, they're dancing over there in their forward spawn, trying to get out of here. Now we have a red soldier jumping up to the Spiler. Spiler. The Spire, as the red Uber is popped. Blue Uber still holding on to it back in the yard. They're down three. The numbers are in red team's favor, and they have to make blue team pop up here. Ruin trying to do everything that he can, but Badonski doing a nice job of DMing. Oh, and Blaze with the fadeaway rockets. He's going to take down the Fragile. We have the first drop of the match here. What a turn of events, Marks is. Yeah, the, uh, that that drop comes in to hurt them here with Alpha's spawn timer. It'd be okay if Alpha was respawned already. They could still have this fight, but, you know, really good spam rockets there from Blaze. I don't think he even really saw Fragile. Just took a good guess that he was going to hide around that corner and choke, and the splash did that magic thing it sometimes does where it actually hits you while you're standing on stairs. Probably rather unexpected, but that... Uh, that's going to give Froyo a pretty solid advantage. We're going to see Blaze go ahead and go in already. Get himself right. Rando and Badonski. So I'm getting I'm getting word from the future. Um, Marty McFly is, is messaging me over Steam, telling me to watch Clockwork. I'm getting, oh my god, watch Clockwork. So I got my eye on Clockwork. Uh, as he pushes Spy right now, he's moving through the house. Uh, doing nothing special as of yet, but I got my eye on him. 64 HP, seeing what he does. Going to collect some health. Uh, yeah, pretty intense health collection there. Uh, I gotta keep it on him, because the future told me to. So, uh, continuing to watch Clockwork, he's jumping up into the Battlements area. Oh, he's flanking the med combo! He's gonna get, is he gonna get the med? Gets the med! Uh, gets the demo man. So a nice flank play from him. Gets a sniper! So there's a triple kill coming in. Not, um, so amazing, but definitely pretty awesome. He sees a scout in front of him. I'm gonna clean up the scout, excuse me, saying not amazing. Gets a soldier! So a nice five kill at the end there, Clockwork, to kill everybody and win the round. Yeah, Marty McFly came through for us there. He gave us a nice moment. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things that Clockwork brings to the table. And he's, that's the second time that he styled on Exertus in that way. There was, I, I got interrupted by the round ending, but, uh, there was Fragile and... Rando were standing on Grey Bridge, kind of just chilling. You see combos do it all the time. They were going to start drinking drinks with those little hats in them, you know? And then Clockwork just ran up and, and killed Fragile and Rando, and that was that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was sort of doubting, um, you know, our profit there. Uh, mid, mid, a mid fragment on Clockwork's part. Once he got the sniper, I thought maybe that was it. Of course, then he ran into a scout, and then he ran into a soldier, and then he capped a point. Um, so, so my mistake, Clockwork going huge there with five kills. Of course, the chat right now on Twitch is exploding with uh, just 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 jovial uh, 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 sayings about Clockwork. They are very happy. I'm uh, uh, I'm impressed right there. 
Um, and right now, Xertus find themselves down in the hole, uh, zero to three in favor of Froyotech. Froyolotech, 4G, uh, whatever you want to call them. I like to call them all of them at once. Uh, we are at the halftime here. Teams will be switching colors. Um, Xertus need to get something going here. Maybe the color change will help them get around. Yeah, you know, red, there was always the joke that red was the better color on this map uh, because of the, the mostly red ground. But uh, it looks like we're here on the second half. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and grab this one, maybe. And we'll watch, we'll watch Banny. He was a fan favorite for a long time. Get some scout going on the mid. So he's going to come under and just run straight up at Badonski. And Ruin also getting a little bit of a slow heal. Going to pull off of Banny. They're coming around now with heals out of the... Uh, the clubhouse area and blaze and clockwork are both going to go down pascal as well for exertus and it looks like i'd say froya has got the stronger position here but the worst heals and male is going to get himself ruined basically trade out and now begins the magical time of an overhealed scout at a mid fight and that's gonna that's gonna pull exertus out for now yeah, Mela doing a nice job in that middle of taking down three. Buying his team some time there. Um, but the blue team, we did note, like you said, have the magical buff scouts, but the red medic is also up for the uh, Xerdis team, and both Ubers are going to be popped on middle. Neither team has capped the middle point as of yet, although blue team are far ahead uh, on that front. A uh, red now all over the point, though, and Clockwork is down. Six strong for the red team. Uh, Fragile's going to take a rocket, but he's going to surface out, and the frags are coming for Xerdis right now. Uh, Dummy is in danger of dying with 8 HP, but Dots is going to clean him up with a sticky. Only Shade left alive, and he is in the danger zone. He goes down uh, to uh, uh, Mela, who bombs in there, uh, and things, shoes are on the other foot, as we might say, as we have Xerdis is capping the point, uh, and they are 50% advantage over uh, the blue team, who are all wiped. Now they get three spawners, and the red team are all over the spire. Yeah, the opening phase of Froyo's Uber there didn't really do a whole lot for him, except for bring the pain from from Exertus. So that's gonna we're gonna watch them go into a nice little spot here, where they're probably gonna push as soon as they get Uber. We do have Banny on the engineer, and he's built on the right side spawn door. So we'll see if. The Fragile brings in a whole bunch of players because they're going to need that gun to go away. And where it goes. So they're bringing the demo. They must have known about the gun or at least had some cognizance there. Lots of point capping going down. The stickies didn't really do their job on Rando. But now we have a 3v3. Demo pressured on the point. Try and get Alpha. The buffed scout will manage to take down Clockwork. And that will get Exertus their first round, Blood Siren. Yeah, so the uh, color change already working out in favor of Exertus. Uh, they are on the board. 3-1 now in favor of Froyotech. Uh, but here we go. Uh, back to the middle point. I'm going to take a look at Ruin this time. Ruin, who we did mention was on Soldier for the first time in Invite that I can remember. Uh, he is with his medic out to middle right now. He's going to jump the point. Jumps very aggressive onto that red soldier. He's going to sneak into the um, enemy uh, midhouse there. Collect the, the, the health pack. Uh, as Mela gets another double kill, Mela going big with that black box on the middle point. Randall's going to take down uh, Ruin, and Pascal's going to take down Shade. That is Alpha, of course. Blaze, the last one left alive, and he gets cleaned up. So I've been very impressed by Exertus' mid. Um, they've been hand, uh, ha ha uh, even, let me just say even, with 4G at every middle fight so far. And right now, they have won themselves another middle point. They are pushing up to the red spire, blue spire. They're going to make it a red spire, as they are getting ready with Uber Charge to push into the blue battlements. Yeah, we got another full advantage push here. Their last one worked out pretty well, so I expect we'll probably see the exact same thing again. Hope And the gun is in the exact same place as last time, so hopefully it'll turn out. There's the Uber. There's already a scout on the point running around on it. Alpha is going to go down, so there won't be any buff scout victory shenanigans this time. Badonski will get the gun. Blaze is going to go down to Mela, but Mela is going to get Ubersawed by Shade, and that could come to have some pretty big repercussions. And uh, all only the Fragile left. We did have some mail get delivered to Badonski as well. 
Yeah, and right now we do see the Fragile was trying to get out of there. There was a scout uh, hot on his tail, but the red team does spawn up. They assist him. And I got my eye on Dummy right now, who's got stickies all over the scout. The scout is trying to get in onto Shade. Um, doesn't do any... Well, it does have damage to Shade. The Shade's going to heal up a little bit. He's got Uber Charge ready to go in case he does get into too much danger. Um, Mabla... And Alpha are down now. I gotta pronounce the B, I guess. Or is it or is it an A? I don't know what it is anymore, okay? I'm just gonna go talk about TF2 as Shade gets ready to push into the middle point um, with his team who are six strong uh, in the face of the, the uh, five strong Exertus. Yeah, Exertus is just gonna back out here. No Mobla, no Rando. And, uh, well, Mobla is actually gonna play Sniper. They're gonna be down there in the trash area, but we got Fragile under pressure. Blaze is going to go down to Badonski and Dummy is going to get the Mela snipe. So that looks like we're going to see Froyo probably back it out here. I'd like to see some Uber Forsage. Yeah, Clockwork tries to go in and get it done, but it doesn't happen. He gets shoddy boom bodied by Rando. Now it's pushing time for Exerta. See how they do with this Uber situation. Oh, and Ruin gets dropped. I I was going to hand it over to Bloodside there, but, uh, you know, things happen. Yeah, and we do see that blue team are um, trying to get out of there. Shade is going to get cleaned up by the rando shoddy. Uh, blue team are on the fritz right now. Red team are all over the point. They are six strong. Blue team are down Shade for another 10 seconds at least. They're trying to come in and do anything that they can. Blaze is going to take down Decimate. Uh, he also took down Alpha too. Uh, but Mela is going to take down Dummy. Uh, and a whole lot of red frags going up. Only Banny and Ruin left alive. Ruin just spawned up on the last point. Where is Banny? Banny's on middle actually, being a little bit of a nuisance. Um, so he is just gonna play cat and mouse as he uh, baits the point, uh, tries to get some soldiers. He's got both soldiers right now on his tail. He's able to take down one of them. Uh, so Banny doing a whole lot of fancy footwork on middle point, buying his team some time. Sees a demo man in his sights, gonna clean him up with the help of Clockwork, and the blue scouts are on the prowl. Yeah, there was some uh, in the fighting game scene, you know, they call it footsies. There's a little bit of footsies there on that mid, but Banny almost got the back cap on that mid. It was, it was a nipple hair situation for sure. But uh, this push is going to be pretty convincing from Froyo Yolo. So and Fragile is going to go down at 93 to Clockwork there, somewhere on the flank side by Diag. So we're seeing a round looking like it's probably going to go to Froyo here, unless miracles happen for Exertus. Yeah, um, and we do see that Shade uh, he does have a full advantage. Um, the Fragile just spun up, so he doesn't have anything. But there is a scout. That is Alpha on the Spire, trying to be um, a little bit of a dissuasive force right now. And he is joined by Bonanski, who is spamming, st uh, spamming stickies up there. Um, Banny is going to shoot it down, but there's going to be a scout joining him very momentarily on the point. Uh, Banny is very hurt. Alpha is going to get the better of him. A nice job from Alpha taking down Banny. Mela is going to take down Ruin. And the red team right now, although they are down the uber advantage, they need to go onto middle right now. Of course, um, they don't have the advantage, but they need, we need to make sure they get in and take away the advantage from the blue team. They have to make him pop right now. Here's an awesome bomb coming in from Mela. A perfect bomb forced to pop. Very hurt. He was at 20 HP and he had to pop a nice job. We do see Fragile is at 75%. Uh, so the Ubers are going to change. They're going to leapfrog. And that is a nice play. That's what you have to do at this high level of TF2. Is you have to recognize when you need to go despite not having the advantage. Yep, it's always better to pop their Uber on mid rather than have their Uber come into you on second and be stuck at last forever. And Shade's actually going to go down to Alpha on the back side. So... That's gonna be a big game changer here because the Fragile, yeah, he had to pop to get mid, but they get three frags out of it and Uber advantage, so totally worthwhile. Probably gonna see some sort of defense mounted here. This is this is higher level invite, so we're not gonna see second just get seated immediately, but Clockwork is gonna go down to Rando, so that's gonna limit them pretty strongly. Looks like Ruin's gonna opt just to chill in lobby. Probably see that old style Dignitas forward hold coming out now. Yeah, we got Banny on the prowl right now as a sniper. He does find a scout. A scout's gonna shoot him in the back. Uh, Banny wasted that entire second defense just with a full charge in the forward respawn. Uh, Blaze is gonna take down Decimate and Alpha. So with the uh, with, with the blast of one rocket, down go down the uh, down go the red scouts. Excuse me. As up goes the red Uber. It is popped up in the upper battlements right now, and it is coming into the last point. Three alive left for the blue team. They do have Banny on the spawn. So can Banny do something? He already influences the fight. Takes down. 
down. Rando, Dummy's gonna get cleaned up. Uh, Dummy's gonna clean up the fragile. Excuse me. Mela's gonna clean up the du uh, Dummy though. But Donsky takes down Shade. Whole lot of frags on the last point. Nipple hairs away from being capped. Oh, but the blue scout. Oh, look at the red scouts who went down earlier on in the fight. Come back for the revenge kill. The blue scouts who locked things down earlier on. Uh, just walked away for a second, and the red scouts came in and double capped it. So, wow. For a little bit of medic points there, uh, Fragile did a thing that he outlines in his 45-minute Badlands last video as medic. So that was pretty amazing for me anyways. And uh, we're going to see another mid here. Looks like we're actually going to see two standard mids go against each other, but Exertus is going to be all over that point, losing Pascal early to Clockwork. And now they're kind of splintering apart here. They've gone, they've gone into the two-man, two three-man four man down area of pain and it looks like we're just gonna have a clean ace here for our mid not a single player dies on a froyo so these are usually pretty dangerous rounds yeah it's it's three two right now in favor of froyo and maybe sensing that things are getting a little bit too close uh they weren't fooling around in that middle they, they stepped it up didn't lose a single body we do see that shade has already climbed onto the spire um with his soldier and they are capping it up He's got the full 100% uber charge. It's a 90% advantage over the Fragile and the Red Team. Clockwork is going to be up in four seconds. Down goes Alpha. Uh, so the things are, are definitely looking good right now for the Blue Team uh, who are moving into upper, bat upper battlements. We do see a little bit of a forward spawn from the Red Team trying to get as much uber as they can, trying to build it as much as they can before the Blue Team comes in. And Banny's going to go down, actually, and so does Ruin. So with two down, uh, this could, this could uh, 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 hurt the Blue Push. Yeah, that's exactly what that forward hold's designed to do, is if the if a soldier drops down onto bats and pushes up too aggressively, he's either going to get thrown to the ground or killed, and that happened to Ruin, and then I guess Banny kind of went exploring and found some death as well, so we're actually going to see Exertus get Uber here and save, for ostensibly, possibly save the round. That should have been a done deal, but the forward hold blocked them, and... Looks like we're going to see Decimate go on to the Pyro class here and try and stop things up. Yeah, we do have Clockwork working in. Oh my god, Clockwork just jumped up from the right side. He's going to take down a soldier. Assisted with Banny is going to clean up that sniper. That should never happen. Clockwork meat shot the heck out of that soldier. Now the blue team is in on the last point. Uh, the red team did pop over along with the blue team. Uh, and things are sort of cleaning up right now over on the last point. Two down for the red team. They do spawn one. Down goes two more. So only two alive now for the red team. Blue team in a chaotic push are able to cap it. Now it's 4-2 in their favor. Yeah, I think that was maybe a suicide that just sort of turned into let's get two frags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely a nice play from Clockwork, who's playing very strong. The Blue Scouts, quite strong in this match so far. Um, taking a look at the middle fight, I'm actually going to take a look at Mela, the, without a B in his name, because uh, he's gotten a double kill on like every middle of this match. So he jumps up right away, sees the medic, puts one rocket into him. Uh, he's going to look at that soldier in front of him. Um, not going to do anything to him. Right, he backs up a little bit, going to click off him and take a look at Banny, who is fighting a soldier on the train. Sees a scout trying to get his medic. going to clean him up. A soldier's bombing his medic, putting a lot of damage into him. He's going to get killed by Rando. Uh, and the frags are very much in favor of Exertus, who have only three dead. The dummy was the last one alive on the blue team, who is able to sticky jump himself out to his battlements uh, and save his life. The red team, like we said, Exertus doing a very nice job of uh, on those middle fights, and they cap it once again. Yeah, Mela eventually got his mark. He came back in and killed the medic after he healed himself with a bit of spam. And uh, actually, Clockwork tries to go for a play here. It gets Badonski. So that's going to be a pretty big limitation here. Clockwork and Blaze are going to go down. Mela is going to end up trading. Rando goes down to Banny the Sniper. That's probably going to make this situation a bit too hot for Fragile or anyone else to really go in here. And Alpha is going to barely escape dodging bullets and rockets and all manner of things and we're gonna see dummy pushing up here pretty aggressively with the banny sniper behind him yeah it's interesting to see the uh the banny sniper play did work out in their favor but i gotta believe if banny wasn't on sniper 
Uh, you would have saw a 4G push in there. As a result, Banning does go down. The Red Uber is popped. Clockwork goes down, so no scouts for the blue team. The red team are all over the spire. Uh, um, we do have Shade right now at 80% with a 65% Uber charge above the red team. Are they going to get it in time to hold last? We have an aggressive scout onto Dummy. Dummy's at 24 HP. He's able to take down Alpha. Uh, but we're now we do have three down for the blue team. Red team just trying to get some position here in the upper battlements, trying to get a pick uh, before they decide to push in with that Uber. Yeah, they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna stabilize. I would have liked to see him opt for trying to get that Uber away from Shade. Clockwork's gonna get mail. I don't even know where that happened. So I think we're probably going to see a push. Fragile's gonna fake his Uber, and this is gonna end up in putting us in a sort of danger zone where teams have both teams have Uber and. You can't really push out a last with that reliably. Alpha's gonna out 1v1 clockwork there. So that's two down for Froyo. We'll probably see a last come out as quickly as possible from Xerdas. Yeah, that's a big play from Alpha. Oh, but Dummy's gonna come up big himself, taking down two. Alpha and Mela go down by the hands of his Sticky. Now we have the red Uber pop, the blue Uber is pop. Down goes the red Demo Man. Uh, we do have Shade right now defending the point with four, five alive. Left for the blue team, only the Fragile and Alpha, who is a spawner, left alive for the red team. So, uh, a, a, a nice push from Exertus, but unfortunately, Dummy, with a nice job with those stickies, able to take down two right away. Alpha's just going to run right in and take down Blaze. He's on his way to last, I believe. Where is he? I lost him there. Uh, it's not going to matter, as blue team Banny uh, and Clockwork, they cap the Spire, and they are on the hunt. Yeah, Exertus, I think, tried tried to really invest in maybe going for a back cap there once they saw the kill come out from Alpha and they end up kind of losing the farm so that's going to put Froyo in the position to cap mid no no Mobla sacrifices possible now and uh, Shade's going to have Uber for this last. I don't know that Froyo can do a lot here I, If I was if I was Exertus right now I would get your your uh your forward, your forward hold in order right now. Pascal's gonna take down Banny Alpha with a nice shot. He gets a nice headshot onto the soldier too, forcing the Uber out of Shade and company. It is only those three left alive for the blue team. They are five up for the red team. Uh, uh, Alpha's almost certainly gonna go down, although he has a cool little surf there. Uh, we do see the red members getting all over the blue combo. Uh, we do have Ruin right now in the face of danger. He is gonna go down. Shade also goes down. Randall's taking down the combo. And Exert's doing a nice job of sort of uh, riding the ship, steadying themselves. And now they are in control of the second uh, cap. And they are on their way to push into middle. They have 95% Uber Marxist. And Shade is still dead. Yeah, that sniper pick kind of made the whole thing happen. It was good snappy play to get the sniper out there kind of in an unexpected position. Also, I should note, Shade went surf to the moon on that one and back and didn't die and then finally got killed after after a successful return from space. The Uber comes in now from Exertus and that's going to get three kills here. Or precluded. Three kills is a lot to give uh, just to pop an Uber over a mid. So that's going to be Exertus getting second. This match is is getting pretty close here, a lot closer than uh, I think some people would expect. Yeah, it's far from over, and that, like you said, that uber pop was really not that much of a benefit at all, because if you take a look at the advantages, it's only a plus three advantage in favor of Shade, and slowly going away. Uh, they are dead even right now, but Nancy's gonna take down Banny. Uh, the scouts for 4G are getting very aggressive. Clockwork and a soldier, that soldier needs to die. That blue soldier needs to die. Blaze is at 26 HP. Nobody can clean him up, and this could be going south for Exertus uh, if they find themselves caught on an island here. Oh, Oh, Fragile did not get the Uber. His soldier jumped away from him, and he was in the 90s. We had a back cap, though. I need to keep my eye on that. We had a back cap. Did you see it? I didn't see it. I did not see it. I was watching. I I felt this pang of, of torment when all everyone jumped away from Fragile, and he was just like, oh, I'm dead. With yeah. His, his 90% Uber. But apparently it was uh, they baited their medic to get the back cap, so good strats. Uh, going into another mid here. Looks like we're gonna see a Froyo go for a standard left-sided mid. Probably a little bit of both from um, from each team taking their own train car. And really aggressive play from Clockwork. Just runs over, kills himself a Pascal. Blaze is gonna get fragile, and this is disaster zone for Exertus. And see Shade survive as well. Mela trying to do stuff over here in the flank, it sounds like. I can't find him in time before Banny kills him, so... Yeah. Gonna see that Uber advantage come into play.
Clockwork right now is on the hunt. He's off that triple kill on middle. Sees the medic beam. He's on the medic. One shot, two shots, taking down the medic. Uh, Clockwork got himself into less right there and decided to go for the metal medic play. And he got it in the end. We do see a sniper for the red team, but Banny's going to clean him up too. So not looking good for uh, Fragile and the Exertus team. Uh, they have lost the Spire. They have lost middle. They are back on their heels. They don't have Uber. On their down a player, and we're gonna get ready for this last blue uh, uber push on to last, I should say. I don't want to call it the last blue uber push yet. Yeah, fragile venting his frustrations in chat, and we see this push come out again with the demo scout uber into last from the top left. Gonna get themselves three players. The stickies are going to be cleared. Melee's gonna drop down now, and that will be that. So it looks like the blood sire prediction was the correct one. I mean, it's always the correct one, right? Yeah. Nope, first first prediction that I got correct in my life. Um, but that's okay, because it was fun to watch, and no matter what the score ended up being, uh, that would have been fun to watch. Uh, definitely a strong showing from Exertus there. Um, they had a little bit of missteps. I'm sure you can't really account for the, uh, the clockwork effect. Clockwork just went huge at some moments, put the team on his back, uh, along with Banny uh, doing a great job there. Um, but it was a fun match, Marxist. Yeah, mostly from what I saw, the if you're if you're one of those learning types and you want people to watch, m m Clockwork, of course, is is good to see, and especially he he obeyed my rule. I talked about it with Harblue the other day. Is if you survive mid and and you're one of those peripheral players that typically dies at mid, that's time to go to last and wreak havoc. And Clockwork uh, got the the magical holy grail of kills in in going to last and killing the medic again. So, Mela had a, also a pretty cool game to watch, too, if you're into, into watching Roamers. Yeah, and he's uh, using that black box, too. So, uh, if you're interested in that uh, and you want to see how uh, one of the best does it, definitely take a look at him. He did have a good game. Like we said, he got a bunch of double kills on middle, uh, a few rounds in a row there. So, a nice job from both teams playing out. Uh, we did see Froyolo Tech, Froyo Tech 4G, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me what I should call them, but I don't care. Uh, they they won the match by a score of five to three. Um, I guess we'll sign off here. Is that is that right, Marxis? Yeah, unless you want to talk about stats real quick. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'll talk about some stats. Uh, so the top pointer of the match, comically enough, is the fragile. So he had eighty two over everybody else. So despite the loss, uh, she actually yeah. So there's uh. There's Banny and Shade, I believe, were the two... Yeah, they had the two fewest deaths. A little bit of interesting there. Your king of damage for the match appears to be Banny in, in damage per minute, uh, maybe. No, I'm lying to you. My eyes have deceived me. It was actually Clockwork with uh, 339 per damage done a minute. That's uh, a <laughs> demo man esque damage per minute. So, yeah. not not only did he have the highest damage on a minute, he had the, the highest total damage too, which that's pretty ridiculous for a scout. That is insane. I think when I play scout, I get like 199 damage on a minute, but this guy is going to pull out almost 340. So clockwork definitely going huge. Yeah, and also with 40 frags, so that'll pretty much pretty much a lot of clockwork going on in this match. And uh, we also did see, you know, overall the the medic statistics all praise the fragile for a lot of it. Uh, he got his "I am the Uber Mensch," which is always something I coveted. I secretly coveted it in every ESCA match. So good to see, pretty interesting game. Damage is pretty heavily weighted towards a Froyo as our frags. So, but uh, five three, pretty good game. Uh, closer than I expected for sure and lots of really cool transition plays uh to to look at too if you're into watching stvs to learn the game is really really cool second defenses that came after mid losses yep um well i had a blast marxist um it was awesome being back in the casting hot seat uh, especially with you as my co-caster uh, i just want to remind everybody that this weekend coming up uh this saturday and sunday we do have the tip of the hats event tf2's largest charity event make sure you tune in it'll be all over teamfortress.tv you can go to tipofthehats.org for more information i'm sure you know about it um, it'll be great. I'll be there. Seabear will be there. Sean Bud. DJ Wheat's going to be there. Star Gem. A whole lot of awesome players. 
um, from the community and from other communities are going to be there. It's going to be great. Um, but uh, I will say uh, thanks, Marxist, for allowing me this opportunity to cast with you. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Uh, nope. It was, it was my pleasure, Blood Siren. Awesome. Well, I think that's it for us now. We are going to sign off. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Goodbye.